Almighty God says, Perhaps you all remember these words. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You have all heard these words before, yet none of you understood their true meaning. Today you are profoundly aware of their true significance. These words shall be fulfilled by God during the last days, and they shall be fulfilled in those who have been brutally persecuted by the great red dragon in the land where it lies coiled. The great red dragon persecutes God and is the enemy of God. And so, in this land, those who believe in God are thus subjected to humiliation and oppression. And God's words are fulfilled in you, this group of people, as a result. It is tremendously difficult for God to carry out his work in the land of the great red dragon. But it is through this difficulty that God does one stage of his work, making manifest his wisdom and his wondrous deeds and using this opportunity to make this group of people complete. Amen. Thanks be to God. This passage of God's words reminds me of a time when I was persecuted by the CCP. One day, around dusk back in April 2017, I was in a meeting with two other sisters. Suddenly, a pack of plainclothes officers burst in. Before I could react, several of them were pressing us down. So we stayed still, frightened, while the rest were tearing the place apart. It took them no time at all to turn the house upside down. I was scared, and I couldn't believe what was happening. My heart was pounding, so I started to pray. Oh God, I am so scared, and I don't know what they're going to do to us next. Bless me with strength so that I can stand witness. But then I, thought of God's words. You know that all things in the environment that surrounds you are there by my permission, all planned by me. See clearly and satisfy my heart in the environment I have given to you. Do not fear. The Almighty God of hosts will surely be with you. He stands behind you, and he is your shield. Amen. God's words bolstered my faith and courage. I knew that I had God behind me, no matter what was to come. As long as I sincerely leaned on and looked to God, He would be with me. At that thought, I didn't feel so nervous or afraid anymore. And then, a female officer viciously slapped me a couple of times. She pinched my chin and then took my picture. They also searched us and took all of our money and valuables. After that, they took all of us to the Municipal Public Security Bureau to be questioned separately. That officer who had taken my photo basically barked at me. What do you do in the church? Who's the church leader? Speak now. I remained quiet. So she exasperatedly pinched my chin with her left hand and then yanked it up. The way she pinched me really hurt and it forced me to stand on my tiptoes then she raised her hand like she was about to hit me and threatened me. You better talk. Otherwise, we have ways of dealing with you. She seemed very angry and dangerous, and I was afraid. I didn't know what she would do to me next. So I started to pray again. At that moment, these words of Almighty God came to mind. Faith is like a single log bridge. Those who cling abjectly to life will have difficulty in crossing it, but those who are ready to sacrifice themselves can pass over sure of foot and worry free. If man harbors timid and fearful thoughts, it is because Satan has fooled them, afraid that we will cross the bridge of faith to enter into God. I realized that my timid and fearful thoughts came from Satan's trickery. It's true. And that the police wanted to torment my flesh so that I would sell out my brothers and sisters and also betray God. That's, That's right. right. I couldn't fall for Satan's tricks. I resolved that no matter what, even if the police tortured me, I'd never be a Judas. I knew my life and death were in God's hands and they couldn't do anything to me if it wasn't allowed by God. Right. That's right. true. 
once I'd recognized these things, I felt a peace in my heart. And so, no matter how hard she pinched my chin or how many times she questioned me, I still didn't say a word. Then something happened. An officer called her away, and I finally got a break. Thanks, be, Thanks to, God. be to God. The next day, around 3 a.m., I was taken to the detention house. They put me in a cell, and a female officer ordered the other prisoners to rip all my clothing off. Then she made me put my hands on my head, turn around, and do squats in front of everyone. I had to do that until they were satisfied, while the prisoners stood to the side jeering at me. I remember being really upset and disturbed, and I was yelling in my heart, why do they humiliate me? If I hadn't experienced it, I'd hardly be able to believe that these so-called people's police could do something so evil and despicable. Yes. Then the officer told the prisoners, she believes in Almighty God, so she's a target of a severe government crackdown. Make sure to teach her the rules well. And so, the prisoners bullied me all the time, and they'd tell me off for anything at all. I did all the heavy chores for them, like sweeping and scrubbing the dirty floors. After a while, I'd be exhausted and my feet would ache. But if I rested for a second or slowed down, they'd yell at me or worse. Every time a prison rule was broken by others, they would put all the blame on me. There was no way to reason with them. Right. Being bullied and verbally abused by the prisoners all the time left me feeling miserable and very weak. It was a nightmare, and whether it would end, I didn't know. There were nights that I would curl up under my blankets and cry until I fell asleep. Uh, I prayed to God a lot during those days, a lot. When I was nearly at my breaking point, I thought of these words of God. Today, everyone will have bitter trials to face. Without such trials, the loving heart you have for me will not grow stronger, and you will not have true love for me. Even if these trials consist merely of minor circumstances, everyone must pass through them. It's just that the difficulty of the trials will vary from one person to another. Circumstances are a blessing for me. Amen. I understood that God had allowed me to go through that condition, and it was to perfect my faith and my love for Him. So I wouldn't betray Him in such arduous trials. So I could stand witness to God. Yes. I thought back to when everything was peaceful, I was overflowing with faith. But now, feeling humiliated, I'd become weak and negative. I saw how inadequate my faith in God really was. I was too delicate. Just like a greenhouse flower that can't bear a bit of wind and rain. But God, by putting me through those trials, those hardships was perfecting my faith. And it was beneficial for my life. Right. I had to bear witness and please God. Thanks be to God. A week later, I was questioned yet again. And viciously, an officer said, if you behave and tell us what we want to know about your church, we'll fight to get you off easy. You are so very young. You should be out there enjoying both your youth and your life. The church isn't worth all this pain. Another officer said, your classmates and friends are all out there working toward their dreams while you're locked up because you believe in God. What would they think of you if they knew you were in jail? Hearing them say this, I thought about how young I was to be imprisoned and wondered if my friends and family would laugh at me if they knew. I felt very conflicted and then I realized that I wasn't in the right state, so I hurriedly prayed to God. Oh God, the police keep disturbing me, and I don't want to be a Judas. 
I beg for protection. Please guide me. Then I remembered this passage from God's words. At all times, my people must be on guard against the cunning schemes of Satan so as to avoid falling into Satan's trap, at which time it will be too late for regrets. Yes, that's, that's right. right. God's words gave me a timely reminder that the police were being insincere when talking of my future. They just wanted to mislead me to get me to betray God and sell out my brothers and sisters. That's right. They were all so evil. They were. At this thought, I said decisively, this is my life and I'm walking the right path. No matter what you say, I will not betray God. Amen. This left the officers stunned. Their ploy hadn't been successful, so they got frustrated right away. One of them said to me, Seems like you've got a lot to say for someone that young. I'm telling you, we can find any old excuse to get you a sentence of 8 to 15 years. You're 18 now, so you'd spend your entire youth in jail. They're so evil. Yes, they are. I thought, no matter how many years I get, I'll rely on God and stand witness. Satan won't make me bow. Amen. Yes. yes. I thought that they'd used up both their carrot and stick approach, and they'd stop questioning me. I never imagined they'd try something even more sinister. One day, in late May, the police took me into an interrogation room and said, We inquired about your little brother's school and saw that he's doing pretty well. Tell us what you know. And then you can go home and spend time with your family. Don't you want to see your brother sooner? Hearing this really hurt me. My brother and I had always been so close, but I'd been on the run for years, hiding from the CCP, and hadn't been able to see him. I had no idea how he was doing. They also said that my dad had recorded a video a few days prior, and then they put a cell phone before me and forced me to watch the video. I saw my dad sitting there, almost lifelessly, his clothes rumpled and looking much older. He said to the camera, Xiao Yi, come back home. We all miss you. <laughs> the police played it over and over. <laughs> As I watched my dad in the video, I couldn't help but cry. <laughs> then one of the officers said, even if you don't think of yourself, you should think of your family and speak to us now. If you're determined to have faith, not only will you do a time, but your family will be dragged in as well. Even if your brother passes all his exams, no college will admit him. He won't be able to find a good job. Even his future kids will be implicated. You should really give it some thought. This was so unfair and painful to hear that. I prayed to God nonstop. <laughs> oh God. I'm feeling weak, and I don't know what to do. Please protect my heart so that I don't follow the flesh and I can bear witness. Amen. Then after, I prayed to God, I thought of this. You must possess my courage within you, and you must have principles when it comes to facing relatives who do not believe. For my sake, however, you must not yield to any dark forces. Rely on my wisdom to walk the perfect way. Do not allow any of Satan's conspiracies to take hold. Thanks be to God. God's words gradually calmed me down. Satan knew I wouldn't give up on my dad and brother, so it used my emotions and my family's future to threaten me so that I would become a Judas. Yes. The police were so insidious. They were. If I betrayed God and followed Satan, even if I were released, and went back to my family, I'd regret it forever. Yes. I then thought about how all things are in God's hands. Even my brother's future would be arranged by God, not by the CCP. 
and once again, I found myself praying to God. I entrusted my family to God and became willing to submit to His plan. Thanks be to God. So I responded, I don't have anything to say. Very angry at this, the officer pounded the table and shouted, If you're going to be so stubborn, we'll have to forget our manners. Don't think that we'll let you off the hook. Just based on what we found when you were arrested, we could arrest your parents and get them three to five years, and then see if your brother can fend for himself. I remember hearing this infuriated me. The CCP not only used tactics to torment me, to get me to betray God, but they tried to coerce me by threatening to harm my family. In China, when someone believes in God, the CCP persecutes their entire family. I despised that pack of demons and was determined to not let them succeed. Yes. And so to this, I very firmly responded. I believe everything is in God's hands and you will never get me to betray Almighty God. The officer once again banged the table in anger, then stormed out. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. One morning, in late May, a female officer came and released me from jail. It was all so strange. The police then took me to the local police station. As soon as I walked in, I saw my dad and my grandpa sitting there waiting quietly. While the police stood there and watched, I realized they weren't going to let me go so easily, but I didn't know what they would do next. After that, the chief officer came up to me and said, just sign this letter of guarantee and we'll let you go home and be with your family. But the document said this, I promise not to believe in God or have contact with the church of Almighty God. I will do nothing on behalf of the church and I will not process any documents to go abroad for the next three years. I must report to the police during a one-year bail period. The CCP wanted me to betray God and break off all ties with the church. So I said that I refused, and I didn't sign anything at all. Good right. for you. Seeing how determined I was, an officer said to me, if you don't sign the document now, you're going to prison for a long time. My dad and grandpa, were really flustered at this and asked me to sign. They said they'd paid some money and struggled to make connections to get me bail pending trial, and I could go home if I just signed. They had no way of knowing that by signing the document, I would be denying and betraying God and bowing to Satan and losing my witness. Exactly. I was under so much pressure from the police and my family so I started to cry. If I don't sign it, I thought, who knows when I'll be free? But if I do sign it, I will be betraying God. Yes, yes. So I prayed to ask for guidance again. And I thought of God's words. I hope that all people can bear strong resounding testimony to me before the great red dragon that they can offer themselves up for me a final time and fulfill my requirements one last instance. Can you truly do this? Amen. Amen. I was ashamed in the face of God's requirement. I was still considering my own flesh and my future instead of satisfying God. I also realized that my family telling me to sign the letter denying my faith was a trick from the CCP. Yes. yes. My faith was proper and my path was righteous. I couldn't give up the true way and betray God just because the CCP threatened me. Yes. Yes. I would never let them win. So I said, pay attention to my words. You'll never get me to give up my faith. You better give up on that idea. The police were furious, but their hands were tied. And in the end, they said I was getting a year of bail. And if they found out I was believing, they'd arrest me and make me go back to jail. I was free, but not from the CCP. 
One day in late June of 2017, the police brought a lawyer to my house to brainwash me. He said, the freedom of religion in China is for show, and we must listen to the Communist Party. When the party says jump, we say how high, and if the party says you can't have faith, you can't have faith. Otherwise, you get what you deserve. I was indignant on hearing this. The CCP tries anything to get us to give up our faith. Christians don't have a way to get by in China. It's true. I would like to read a passage of God's words with everyone. Great. Great. Almighty God says, Religious freedom, the legitimate rights and interests of citizens, they are all tricks for covering up sin. Why put up such an impenetrable obstacle to the work of God? Why employ various tricks to deceive God's folk? Where is the true freedom and the legitimate rights and interests? Where is the fairness? Where is the comfort? Where is the warmth? Why use deceitful schemes to trick God's people? Why use force to suppress the coming of God? Why not allow God to freely roam upon the earth that he created? Why hound God until he has nowhere to rest his head? Where is the warmth among men? Amen. Amen. These words from God help me to clearly see the evil essence of the government. The CCP is a demon of Satan that hates the truth and God. Yes. The more savagely it persecuted me, the more I wanted to fully forsake it and follow God. Amen. The police came to my house a number of times after that, and they had the village cadres tell me to give up my faith. They also got my family to tell me to write a statement of repentance. Through God's words, I was able to get through all the attacks and temptations and stand witness. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Even though I physically suffered a bit from my arrest and persecution, I developed discernment. That allowed me to see the CCP's evil essence and its opposition to God. I forsook it and rejected it. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Through persecution and hardship, God's words guided me to triumph over Satan's tricks. And it was his words that gave me faith and strength to overcome my fleshy weakness and stand witness. Thank oh, God. I really have experienced the authority and might of God's words, and I am more faithful than ever before. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This was all done mm -hmm. through Almighty yes. God's words.